You know, I really liked Barry Zito when he was with the Athletics, and you know, he was just the perfect lefty to idolize after. Really calm guy, and you know, really poised on the mound, had great stuff, and was just fun to watch. And you know, I always looked at Barry Zito as someone I could try and take my craft after, just you know, try and be like him when I'm out on the mound. And you know, I think I'm sort of the same way, being laid back, and you know, he's a really good competitor. Is has nothing bad to say, or it's just a person that you can have a, you know, sort of like a role model. Well, if the Indians get anything like Barry Zito in Scott Barnes, a left-hander now with the Akron Arrows, I think the tribe will take that. They, they will take that, and if you, you heard Scott Barnes say he's laid back like Zito, but you know that he's got that fire because he's got to prove that he was worthy of that trade for Ryan Garko. So uh, here's a guy we keep an eye on as well. All right, one to watch down at Akron at the AA level in the Eastern League. Welcome back to the show. Let's move once again back up to the AAA level and take a look at a prospect that we've seen a little bit of here in Cleveland. He was one of the players that was a centerpiece to the Cliff Lee deal. Right-hander Carlos Carrasco. And with more on him, let's go down to Columbus and join Scott Leo for this report. It is time to focus on the future here on the Indians Minor League Magazine show. Joining us here in Columbus is Clippers starter Carlos Carrasco. And Carlos, you were the opening day starter for the Clippers this year. You pitched pretty well out in Arizona in spring training. How did you feel coming into the season? You know, when I come in uh, very good, you know, in focus, a little bit more in focus. And uh, everything when I do uh, down there in Arizona, I do it right here on uh, this level, you know. And uh, they helped me a lot. Uh, I got more experience, you know. And uh, I got more moving in my in my fastball, in my breaking pitch, and everything's good. You were in the discussion up until the end of spring for the number five spot in Cleveland. David Huff won the job, and you came here to Columbus. Were you disappointed by that? And have you used that as motivation to try and pitch your way to the big leagues? No, you, you know what? Like I, I would say before, and uh, that's his business, you know. And uh, I got surprised because I still in a competition for the last week, you know, and uh, I feel so great. And uh, half, he, he got the number three spot. And um, I'm here in Columbus, uh, ready for, for the one minute to call to the big league, be ready for me. You mentioned more movement on your fastball and improvement with your breaking pitches. You're a guy that has to establish that fastball early in the game to really have success. Have you been able to do that so far here in Columbus? Yes, yes. I do it in the first game, and, uh, and then my second game I do it. And uh, my fastball is uh, such a great fastball right now. And um, Metro Sinker, they help me a lot. I got a lot of ground balls. And um, I, feel, I feel more comfortable, you know. I feel more uh, relaxed. I feel more, I know what I'm doing, you know. Mm -hmm. I know the, um, I know more about baseball. Carlos Santana has been behind the plate for you for your first few starts here with the Clippers. I know uh, he's thought of very highly in the Indians organization on a lot of levels. Talk about your work with him. Have you been uh, happy with working with him in these first few starts? Oh yes, yeah. Santana is a great catch. You know, he know he know the game. He know about the game. You know the heat it. And uh, when he got run, you know, I check and um, sometime when the scene is over and try to, to talk with Santana, you know, we, ha we need to do this, we need to do that. So, so I need to, for the next three here, so we can, we can start with the fastball, curve, or change, yeah. But it's just very good. Charlie Nagy is your pitching coach with the Clippers, and he's had plenty of success at the major league level. How has he helped you? Uh, a lot, you know. He, uh, every, every day he talk, he talk. Uh, he talked to me, you know, you, you got a great fastball, you know, you have to use it more. And uh, for the lay in the game, if you need to throw your slider, your curve, and you change, yeah, so you have, you, 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 you have him, you know. And uh, they tell me, you tag the sun, you got a, you got a good fastball, and uh, when you need it, you break in pitch, you can throw normally. You know? In the Columbus starting rotation, yourself, Hector Rondon, Genmar Gomez, Johan Pino, four Venezuelans in the starting lineup. How neat is that to be around some fellow countrymen? You know, you know what he said uh, for me is uh, I feel so happy, you know, because uh, I've gotten uh, four Latin guys 
in the spot, you know, and then we got an uh, American. But it's good, you know. I feel like uh, everybody, I, I, like I say, everybody's um, on the team. We stand together with the team. But when I see the, the kind of rotation, you know, and uh, start thinking, uh, you know, who, uh, the, um, we need to, to do work together, you know, try to have uh, um, Rondon, uh, Pino, Gomez. Uh, we, we talk to them every day we did, we, what we had to do. All right, congratulations on a good start to the year and best of luck down the road. All right, thank you very much. Carlos Carrasco with us here in Columbus on the Indians Minor League Magazine. I don't think there's any doubt that Carrasco is going to be in the Indians rotation sooner than later. Guy that strikes out a lot of batters, but as, as of right now is walking some guys, and I think if he can get that under control, obviously when he throws strikes, he gets people out. Right. You, you put base runners on, and, and you're going to hurt yourself. So I think he'll be up uh, before we know it as well, don't you? Yeah, he's still a relatively young guy, too, sure. Greg. I mean, that's one of the things that people you know sometimes forget about. 22 years old, and you know, he's already got some major league exposure, so he's definitely a guy to keep an eye on. And Thursday night, you can keep a good eye on him right here on Sports Talk. Ohio as he'll be taking on the Charlotte Knights. We'll have the game for you beginning at 6:30, and uh, you'll get to see his progress now. People saw him last September. A few people saw him in spring training, but he has made uh, a little progress here in April too that you can see on Thursday. And the bottom line is he's got a pitch, and that's why you know you send him down to AAA as opposed to maybe bring him out of the bullpen. You need to get him his starts every five days, and then you hope that maturation process goes the way you hope. All right, we'll take a break here on Indians Minor League Magazine, but there's still more to come. We'll see where the teams are going to be this upcoming week. Plus, check out the wheelbarrow race here at Classic Park. There's Craig Dees there I am. going for first place. <laughs> we'll also have our final thoughts for you, Ed Moore. Stay right here. Beautiful. Here's a look at the standings for the Indians minor league teams. Four teams have already begun play. Of course, Mahoning Valley will start in June. And coming up, here's the schedule with Columbus, Akron, Kinston, and Lake County. And once again, Mahoning Valley will start on June 18th. So that's only a couple of months away. And Let's hope indeed that uh, these teams perform well, but the prospects keep developing as well. They, they do, and that's what's going to make this organization successful, stockpiling these prospects and, and working them all the way through from, from the bottom to the top. And again, as Curtis talked about earlier with the Around the Horn package, everybody gets a chance to see them starting with Mahoning all the way up. All right, Craig. Well, hey, thanks for joining us here. Was, we'll see you again soon. Yeah, it was great. Uh-oh. And you get a look here. At the Sugardale Hot Dog Race at Huntington Park, it was one of ESPN's top ten plays. Now, there is no word if Ketchup cheats in the minors as well, but we have it on good authority. He just may. Visit us on Facebook. <laughs> For Craig Dees, I'm Al Pulowski. We'll talk to you again soon. Have a good one.